Welcome back guys, boys and girls. As I promised, new video the next day. I want to keep them a little bit shorter, as I said, more frequently, a little bit shorter. At least as long as we are building on this battery shelf here, there's so much work to do. And now we are continuing with building the battery shelf, the energy distribution compartment at the top. So getting all the bus bars ready, drilling all the holes, tabbing the threads, and then getting ready to fit everything in this compartment. It is exciting. So, the, um, the next step would be to design our bus bar here for our circuit breaker connections. Well, this is now a question where I have a gap like this and what position, you know, what's the best car? What's the best computer? What's the best phone? How long should your bus bar be? <sighs> These are all impossible questions. And then how far do I go on this end? Do I go all the way? Or just until here? How many connections do I need in the future? <laughs> and also here on the end of this section, there will be a 12 volt bus bar with fuses and a 12 volt 30 amp DC converter. So I need some space here at the end as well. I cannot use the full length for my bus bar here. I would say if it goes up until here, so then we've got a separation of the 48 volt situation and the 12 volt situation with a barrier in between here. Yeah, I think this is okay length, but where do I start? How good will my cables be to come out here and connect to these two bars? Because this will be a tight bend again. So there will be another acrylic um, barrier here to uh, protect the bus bars here because this is all unfused coming from the batteries. Well, it is fused for each battery bank, but still in some this is a lot of energy. So I better better protect this here with a, another shield with a barrier. So this will be sitting here. And then we've got the bus bar somewhere cable coming along and going. I think this is a good position to start with the actual bus bar here. But um, let me stand back and think about it for half an hour. <laughs> it's what I usually do. That's a decision, you know. <laughs> okay, so this is how it will look like roughly. We've got six connections over this side, six connections on here, and the same on the negative bus bar as well. And one side will be for inverters and load, and the other side will be for solar charge controllers. So incoming power, outgoing power, battery connection. And now there comes the worst part. Drilling into copper. I hate this. Wow, we can barely touch it. This one shows only 33, but I think it's the reflecting material here. It doesn't measure correctly. You can barely touch it. So as you can see, I have now put a, a thread in here, M8. The only problem is I haven't got a 6.8 millimeter drill, which is usually required to tap M8. I've got only a 7 millimeter here. Does it matter? Some would say yes, it does. This is an M8 by 20 uh, spring washer, washer, cable lock, and then we've got that much left on the underside. That's what I thought I'm doing with all these ones. And then we can easily connect our cables there. I don't think it makes a big difference. 6.8 to 7 millimeter, 0.2 millimeters for an M8 thread. And this is 10 millimeter wide. So it's not a thin material here. Otherwise I have to wait until tomorrow and buy a 6.8 millimeter drill bit. Nah, I'll keep going. We drill with seven millimeters and it'll be fine. Well, this is, this is not for construction work. You know, this is just for attaching a ring terminal to a copper bus bar. 
Um, I've got confirmation from the Blue Bar industry at the Sunshine Coast. They've got the cable locks there. They put them aside for me and I can pick them up tomorrow. We still haven't decided if we actually go because this is a four or five hour trip to pick up 30 ring terminals. That's insane, right? That's insane. There's nothing here in the area which has these quality ring locks here. They are the best. Really thick copper material and this part here is long enough so you can crimp it twice. Gives the maximum best contact, best connection to the cables ever. I love them. So probably we are going tomorrow <laughs> and pick up these. Well, we are doing other stuff as well. While we are at Sunshine Coast, we spent the day over there and then when we come back tomorrow night, the uh, battery drill overheated while drilling all this copper here and the battery got so hot it didn't even... Oh, it's charging now. Okay, yeah, nice. I put the fan in here to help cooling the battery. Shit, I think my I think my plastic cracked here. Ah, look at this. Ah it lifted up the plastic while drilling. And then these marks are here. That doesn't look good. I don't know, it's under the sticker. I don't want to look at it. I really don't want to. Uh, I can feel. Yeah. There it's shattered. Ah shit! happened already here ah, damn it that should not happen this comes from too much pressure from the battery drill then it lifts up your plastic it goes through the plastic too fast damn it okay let's do a little test and see if it fits i have to take off the sticker here anyway the protection film sticker at some stage so now we can connect the first cable here just temporarily of course just for the joy of doing it okay there we go so this will be our no, come on camera this will be our incoming cable from the breaker coming from the bus bus here from the battery banks and then we've got the distribution bus bar up here these ones will be for the charge controllers and these ones will be for the load well at the moment we've got only one inverter connected so everything else is future but we've got the possibility nice sturdy 650 amp bus bar okay now i'll do the same over here once the um, battery has cooled down and the battery drill is ready again <laughs> that is a total torture for the battery drill Copper is such a bastard material. It's not nice to work with. Even I'm using here WD-40, but still tabbing M8 in copper is not easy. <laughs> well, some of these holes are a bit out of line. See this one, for example, and there's another one that's just a soft copper. 
Even I punched a small hole into the copper before I start drilling. The drill bit still moves inside this soft copper and you're getting these holes which are not aligned anymore correctly. It will be tucked away in the shelf anyway. Okay, and here is our negative bus bar. So far, again, just a temporary setup to see if everything fits. But so far it looks good. Okay, here comes the big final test. Nine point five and nine point five. <laughs> All right, so and here's my self made uh, six, twelve, twenty four port, six hundred fifty amp bus bar. That looks solid, right? Okay guys, I think this is how far I will go tonight. It looks like good progress though. I've got the bus bars installed, have drilled all the holes, put a thread in it, got everything ready. And look at this mess here. Jeez. Here, look at this. Look at all this copper here. Wow. What a waste, huh? Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching guys. Until the next video tomorrow, stay safe, stay charged. No, stay charged, stay safe. Doesn't matter, does it? And thank you so much for all your support here on the channel, guys. Okay, see you tomorrow again with the next video here from our battery shelf installation, energy distribution compartment. We will go further tomorrow. Oh yeah, boy. Oh,